we could, we could get kids to sell about anything. <laughs> We're not trying to sell you anything, but we want to sell you on being part of Operation Christmas Child. If you haven't got your shoe boxes, they're available out in the four years. Pick those up. Be awesome if we set a record for our giving to that. And I know that we're taking the gospel all the way around the world uh, with, with Operation Christmas Child. And there'll be opportunities for you to sign up to help participate in a lot of different opportunities there. So um, pick up your shoe boxes. Also, uh, Pastor Kerry misspoke. And uh, imagine that, one of the pastors misspeaking. But um, the uh, sub- Pastor Weaver, you misspoke too. I'm going to get to that in a minute. So... Um, <laughs> I'm up here to clean up everybody's mess is what I'm doing, really. (laughs) So Savannah's Hope is the silent auction and the baked baked goods out there. That's just today. It's not for the next week. So if you've got a bid, it'll be finished this morning. You can, you'll you'll, know if you've got that, you can take it with you if you want to hang around for a little bit. So anyway, that's today and today only. Uh, Our our sermon series is a two-week series that is four, four, it's a four-part series happening this Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, and Sunday nights. That's just two weeks. Just, I, I'm, I'm setting myself up because I know I'm going to misspeak like five times today. And uh, I'm just looking for the next critic who wants to get up and, and uh, throw me under the bus. I say all kinds of dumb things. There's a phrase in the scripture that I'm reading this morning that I speak very, very clearly and enunciate because I've seen on video how pastors have said this the wrong way and it just is a tongue twister and it gets anyway you'll have to figure that out now everybody's baited with waiting with bated breath what is he going to read and what is that all about um is that a phrase i I, i've heard that before see there's one check mark one against me um moses mawaii one of our uh, members who is from kenya uh, his mom passed away this morning in Nairobi. So uh, would you just join me in praying for him and for his family? Father, we just lift Moses and his family to you, God. And I know that across the miles, God, it's, it's very, very difficult. And we just pray for this family and the loss of, 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 this, of this woman. And we just pray, God, you administer your peace and strength, God, uh, to Moses as he's here and to all of his family, wherever they might be. I just pray your peace. God, we, we lose loved ones, and it's very, very tough, and so many sitting here understand. And God, I just pray that we would be able to bear one another's burdens, if nothing but holding them up in prayer. Uh, as we minister to one another, God, we're ministering to you, um, and we thank you, God, that your hand, your uh, touch goes across the miles and around this, this world that we live on. And we just thank you, God, for your peace today. Pray your touch on this family, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, if, if we've got ushers or some guys that can help, um, this is impromptu, but we're going to do a dollar blessing for Moses. He, he doesn't get back to Africa, um, but we want to be able to, if we, if we can get him a ticket to go to Africa, let's, let's do that. If you've got a dollar or two or five um, to participate in this, we're just going to pass them down the end of the row, and uh, a little goes a long ways when we do dollar blessings. Here, God. That's how we can be a church and love love one another. So while they're while they're doing that, let me just uh, reiterate: we're starting a series today on hearing God's voice, and uh, over the next two weeks. Uh, tonight, Pastor Zach's going to be sharing on the various ways that God speaks. I'll touch on just that briefly uh, in my message. Uh, next Sunday morning, Pastor Austin is going to be talking about roadblocks to hearing God's voice, the things that can keep us from, from hearing him speak. And then Pastor Brian, next Sunday night, will be uh, sharing on the topic of God's calling. What is, it, what is it that God's calling me to do? I mean, there's some things that we know from Scripture about what God is called us to do, and then there's things like, what, what, what are we doing? We don't know what the Word specifically says. So he's going to be talking about that. What, what is our calling? What are we called to? Places to go, people to marry, jobs, careers, those types of things. Um, we, we all have a mission, and we want to know exactly what God is calling us to. So we're, we're excited, and I really just uh, hope that 
we all hear God speak today. And here's, here's the thing that I, I just have this sense, I don't know, but I, I think as a whole, I'm talking not just our church, but I think Christianity, uh, we, we, we don't pray very much. And we're not people of the word like, like we could be. And I don't mean that to be a rebuke in any way, but more of a challenge to say, we call ourselves Christians. We're followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is really vital that we know what he says. It's vital that we know who he is. And really the only way that we can do that is to be people of the word and spend time in his presence. That's how we get to know each other. What kind of a relationship do we have in a marriage? Like if I never talk to Jeannie, even if she talked to me, and I never, I never talked to her at all, what kind of relationship would that be? It, it really wouldn't be. We, we are Christians and we need to pursue and do all we can to cultivate uh, that relationship. It comes through prayer, it comes through being in the word. And so I wanna just challenge us today. Uh, I don't know where you're at, I don't know, I mean, some of you may spend all kinds, of, I know we have people who pray and people who pray a lot and those people would never tell you. Thank you for, for praying. Uh, but let's be, let's be people of the word. You can turn in your Bibles to Psalm 19. I'll get there in just a little while. When, when, my, when my kids were little, uh, there were videos that they all watched when they were little. And I would have to say, um, Zach, our oldest, uh, Pastor Zach, this, this was his top on his list. I just know because, I, I mean, I could quote some of these 30-minute episodes of the Donut Man. How many of you heard of the Donut Man? He's, it's old school, I know, VHS tape. Some of you don't know what that is or what that looks like. I mean, remember we had the challenge of the generations a few weeks ago when I spoke. Uh, that's, that's a VHS tape. And, um, but, but the Donut Man, it was a kids, Christian kids video. And the theme song of the show went like this. Life without Jesus is like a donut because there's a hole in the middle of our heart. And I, I don't know that there is necessarily a scripture that I can point to that says that that's exactly theologically correct. But I believe that there is a hunger in all of us. I'm talking about not just us here, but I think in all of God's creation, there is a hunger in every person to know God, and, uh, and it's a place that only God can fill. There is this place. The psalmist writes this, My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go meet with God? There is, there is something in all of us that is reaching out, trying to fill our lives with something. There's a void in all of us. The problem is instead of turning to God, we turn to other things, hoping that those things will satisfy and fill that hunger. But in the end, only God can satisfy. Everything else is going to leave us empty. One of the greatest hungers in the heart of mankind, I believe, is to hear and know the voice of God. Jesus tells us in John 10 that he's the shepherd and we're the sheep. And this is what he says, John 10, 14. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. They listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. He says this in verse three through five. The sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them. And they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know him. To know God's voice. It's a story of a young boy whose parents had gone out to the store to get some groceries. And during the time that they were gone, the apartment caught flames. And uh, soon the, the whole apartment building was engulfed in flames. And this boy was standing on the balcony of their fourth floor apartment with the flames dangerously close. Uh, the rescue people had come, and they were uh, down at the, on the ground level uh, trying to do everything they could to get this boy to jump into their, into their safety net, and they were calling him by name. They were begging him to jump to safety, uh, but, he, but he wouldn't move. Suddenly, out of the crowd, a man yelled the boy's name and told him to jump, and without hesitation, without a question, the boy jumped uh, to safety and, and was perfectly fine. The firemen were stunned. And they asked this man, why did he jump for you and not for us? And he said, because I'm his dad. 
and he knows my voice. I'm his daddy, trust me. Of all the voices that are saying something, it's amazing to me that as parents in a crowd of kids that you can pick out your own child's voice, your own child's cry. In a nursery full of kids, a mom can hear her own, her own baby. What are we tuning into in the voices that we're listening to? You see, our responsibility as sheep, as uh, Jesus is our shepherd, our responsibility as sheep, as his followers, is to position ourselves to hear his voice, to be listening for him. See, the Lord is constantly speaking. He's constantly giving us direction. The problem with hearing, hearing God's voice isn't that he's not speaking. It's that we're not listening. We want to hear God speak, but are we listening? I have this, uh, talk about the generation thing. Some of you may know what this is. Many of you may think, hmm, is it a washing machine? <laughs> this, my generation had these that were about three or four times that size, and this was, you know, we carried them around like this. How many identify? Okay, yes. This isn't quite big enough to be called a boom box, but that's kind of what it is. This one actually has a nice top-loading cassette tape deck. And uh, it's a pretty fancy one. It has a digital radio display right here. So. But a radio uh, and a TV alike, both radio and TV uh, stations, you know, they transmit their signals 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Constantly over the airways. If I, if I had the right size D cell, or D cell batteries or C cell batteries, that's kind of an old thing too. Or I could just plug this thing into the electricity. It, we could get, get, get some sound out of here and I could turn on the radio and the reality is, is up and down that radio dial, there are all kinds of uh, stations broadcasting. But the only way for me to be able to hear what I'm listening for is to tune into the right frequency. And it's not that they're not speaking, but I have to tune into that frequency. I have to first turn on the machine and then I have to tune it into the right frequency to hear the right voice. So if I want Van and Bonnie in the morning, 1040 on AM dial, that's the only place I'm going to hear them on this radio if I wanted to tune into that voice. So they're constantly, they're constantly transmitting, but the failure to hear the signal doesn't mean that the station isn't transmitting. Our problem isn't that God isn't speaking. The problem is our receivers. We have to make sure that they're turned on and that they're tuned in. Our receiver is turned on and tuned in. We have to believe that God is already speaking, and then we just need to start listening. And to listen takes effort. It takes time. It, it's, it's work. You know, I, I realize that there is a difference between listening and hearing. Hearing, just because you're hearing doesn't mean you're listening, and vice versa, right? So hearing, if hearing is an action in which sound is perceived by the ear, I heard something. Listening is an action which you choose to actively concentrate on what you hear. So you may say to your spouse, yeah, I heard you. What does that mean? I know that you were probably saying something, but I wasn't listening and I can't repeat back what you were saying. So to say I was hearing, I heard you, doesn't really mean a whole lot. It means there was some sound going on and I thought it may be you. But if we are really listening, we know what voice to listen to and we're actively pursuing what our ear is hearing to understand what is going on. We have to concentrate to listen. So here's the deal. The average Christian lifestyle is so busy and so noisy that we have to be intentional. And unless we're intentional, our lifestyle is not conducive to hearing God's voice. We are so busy. There is so much going on. 
There are so many things to do, so much to listen to, so much to watch, so much to be part of, so many things going on. Our biggest reason that we don't hear God's voice is that we're way too busy. Psalm 46.10 says, be still. Be still. Be still. And know that I am God. Yes, I heard that voice. I wasn't listening, but I heard it. It's when we're still, when we're quiet, in the stillness, it's not the busyness, but in stillness that we can tune into uh, our, our spiritual ears to hear the voice of God. And that, that can be so easily drowned out by the activity and the turmoil and the chaos of our daily lives. There's so many different ways that God can speak. He speaks to, and we're talking today about the Word, how He speaks to us through the Word. It's the most obvious. But there's prayer, prayer and fasting. Fasting where we move out obstacles out of the way so that we can tune in much better into the frequency to be able to hear exactly what God's saying. There's a still small voice, the whisper of God, often heard in silent times. Uh, sometimes other people can speak into our lives, something that God wants to say. We, we can have promptings. You ever just felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to do something or go somewhere or have a conversation with someone or maybe give some money to somebody, whatever that might be. Just, he can speak to us through promptings. He can speak to us through pain in our lives. Life circumstances, dreams, visions, music. I'm so encouraged today just with the worship and I, the, 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 the lyrics of the fact that God is faithful. You know, I know that. And I found myself in the early service, I'm standing there, I'm realizing that there's tears coming out of my eyes. I'm not sad. I'm just, it's like I realize, God, you're speaking to me and you're telling me that you're faithful. That, that song that we sang, uh, Sea of Victory, that is... Here, I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. He doesn't fail. He doesn't lose. He only knows how to triumph. My God will never fail. Every war that he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant because I know how this story ends. You know, here's the deal. And, you know, we can ask this question. How do, how, do we, how do we interpret all the things that are going on around us? Because life happens and, and crazy things can happen and we're going, God, where are you at? Well, here's what I know. I know those things about God. And even if I'm in the midst of a storm, even in the, if I'm in the midst of turmoil, even if I'm in the midst of a trial, you know, my, my feelings, my emotions say, God, you've left me. But I know enough about this word that says, God, you never leave and you never fail and you are working all things for our good so I can trust him. I wouldn't know that if I didn't know the word. I'd be left with my emotions and my feelings going just, what's the point? How many Christians do we hear? You have friends. Maybe you say it yourself sometimes. We get in the midst of something and we, and we just want to throw it all in and say, God, you are so bad and wrong or else I wouldn't be going through this right now you ever felt that way bad stuff happens but God never changes he's the same he's always the same and I know there's struggles I I'm looking across the room and there's deep deep things that I know that so many of you are going through and it's not to make light of this it's to say look when I know who God is and when I'm in his word and I know this is God this is the God of the Bible this is what he, he says and this is what he does this is how he is this is his character this is his nature then I can say God I'm going to see a victory. It seems like I'm at the bottom of the pile and everybody's piling on, but I believe that victory is coming because you never fail and you don't lose. You're all about winning. You're all about victory. That's who you are. It may not come right now, but I know it's coming. We can, we can stand in faith on those things. So for us to know and recognize God and his voice, we have to know the word. We have to be people of the word. And listen, you don't have to be an overnight scholar. Someone asked me this morning, what, what do I do when I, I'm reading and it just seems like 
drivel. It seems like I, I'm just jumbled up stuff. I know it happens. I, other books that I read, it's like that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's not just the Bible. There's times, though, when we, if we don't open the book and we're not in the book, it's certainly not going to speak to us. And there may be times where I spend 5, 10, 30 minutes reading the Bible and it doesn't really seem to do anything for me at that moment. It just seems like jarbled words. But the reality is God can still speak if we will continue to draw close to him. So what we know of God through reading his word, his character, those qualities, his nature, will help us to know if it's truly God speaking to us in all these other ways that he can do so. We'll ask ourselves this question, does that sound like the God that I know of the Bible? Does that sound like something he would say? If someone comes to you and says, God told me to tell you this, and, and you're hearing what they're saying, you're going, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. I'll, I'll, I'll pray about that. I'll study the scripture. I'll, what I know of God, does that sound like something he could say? It always comes back to the word. The word is the gold standard. It's a sure way to know God and a sure way to know, uh, to have him speak to us. And so this morning we're looking at Psalm 19. In Psalm 19, God is revealing himself. Uh, the first six verses are about, uh, he's revealing himself through nature. Kind of a natural revelation. In the next five verses, he's revealing himself through scripture. A, a kind of a supernatural re revelation of himself to us. So if you'll read with me, it took us a while to get here, but Psalm 19, just a second. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It raises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. We see that God can be seen, God can be heard through his creation. Romans 1 tells us that, that very thing as well. Verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, in keeping with them there is great reward. So this morning we're going to be looking at God revealing himself through his scripture, through the word. And so if you notice in verses 7 through 9, there are six statements here as God reveals himself through scripture. Uh, these are the words that he uses about the scripture. The law, statutes, precepts, commands, the fear of the Lord, and the decrees of the Lord. Six titles for the word of God. You can find these in Psalm 119 as well, repeated over and over and over. And, and for each of those titles, there is six different characteristics and six different benefits, all of them showing us how God speaks to us. So we're going to take these uh, one at a time. The first statement is this, verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. It speaks of the authority of Scripture, that it is true and divine instructions that are perfect. They're perfect, meaning it's, it's complete and it covers absolutely everything. The law of the Lord is perfect me means that it's the way that it ought to be. It is exactly the way that it ought to be. You see, our ideologies and philosophies on how to live uh, always come up short. But the law of the Lord is perfect and completely covers everything. And the result or benefit of it is, is that it refreshes our soul. It renews our mind. It restores and revives our inner being. It sensitizes us to the voice of God. God's word is absolutely essential for us as Christians. And being in the scriptures daily is critical for us, knowing God's voice and his will. And when we're in the word on a regular basis, it adjusts the frequency of our lives so that I can tune in and fine tune to hear God's voice. The second statement is this, the statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. In a day where we hear all about fake news, right? 
we don't know who to believe. Somebody says one thing, this side says fake news. This side says something, this side says fake news. Everybody's blaming the other person for not telling the truth. We don't know what's right or what's wrong. But here's what we do know. God's word, his statutes are true and sure. It's something that you can trust. God's word never changes. God never changes. And it says that they make wise the simple. So I want to talk about that word simple. You see, a simple person is someone who lacks maturity or wisdom, discretion. They're foolish and ignorant. That's, that's the simple person. The simple person is someone who, who doesn't guard their heart. A simple person will watch anything. A simple person will listen to anything. They'll read anything. which works against our hearing God's voice. Because if you want to hear his voice, you have to close the door to other voices. So the simple person is that open door. Anything comes in and anything goes out, right? You see, we have doors on our houses. And I'm guessing that most of you, if you left the house and nobody's there today, you even locked the door when you left because there's some people that you want to keep out. Actually, most people you want to keep out. You have a door on your home to let whoever in that you want and to keep whoever out that you don't want. It makes sense, doesn't it? And we'll guard that with lock and key. That's important to us. So we need to know what to let into our lives and what to keep out. And that's what the statutes and decrees of the Lord do. They make wise the simple. You see, the biggest fool is someone who knew it, but didn't live it. A fool is someone who knows what to do, but doesn't do it. The wise people are those who master the art of holy living, living according to the will of God and the word of God. But we can't live by the word of God if we don't know what the word of God says. Some things we allow into our lives, we will keep us from hearing God. Many people don't hear what God is saying because there's simply too many other voices speaking into their lives, ruining their ability to discern him. Statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The third statement is the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. You're saying precept. That's not a word I'm used to, used to using. It's not a word that I use. It's not a word that I even hear too much. Precepts are simply principles or guidelines. Precepts are the guidelines that we live by, the principles that we live by. The precepts of the Lord position us to make right decisions. To make right decisions as a parent, as a spouse, as a business person that set you on the right path. And the result is that it brings joy to our heart. Following the precepts of the Lord bring joy and a sense of calmness to our life. In the midst of turmoil, when we live by the principles of God's word, we can experience joy and we can experience peace and a calmness. Psalm 32, 8, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. You think God has something good for you. You, He watches over your life and he will guide you along the best pathway. Fourth statement is this. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. I think we have an idea. We may not know what precept was necessarily. I think we have an idea what a command is, right? A command is very different than a suggestion. A commandment isn't, some, isn't God saying, hey, I think this is a great idea. You might want to give it a try sometime. A command is very different than that. It's really important that we come to a place in our relationship with God that where his word says something, that should just settle it for us. We're looking for an answer. And it might be hard, but we need to come to a place to say, if God said it in his word, that's good enough for me. That settles it, and I'm done. It may not be popular, it might not fit well in the culture, but if God said it, we need to listen to it. This is his word, he's the creator of the universe. 
doesn't matter what our traditions say. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I want to do. It doesn't matter what other people are telling me to do. God's word is clear about how life works. Over and over through scripture, he'll say things like this. Do this and you will succeed. Do this and you will be blessed. And if you don't do it, you're going to be pretty frustrated and it could be disastrous. There are absolute authoritative commands in the Bible that are clear, that are pure, and as this verse says, are radiant, giving light to the eyes. God's word, his commands, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. It's like he takes our head with his hand on our head and says, that's where I want you to go. That's what I want you to see. When Zach was three years old, we were sitting in McDonald's on a Sunday afternoon after church out for a real fine sit-down meal. <laughs> and where we lived in Montana is a pretty uh, touristy area, and so we were sitting at McDonald's and uh, up rolls a big tour bus, and you know, he was three, so we were just talking, and, and he was getting a little fidgety, so it was like, let him down and walk around. There wasn't too many people around, but there was about 50 or 60 people getting off this bus. And so I'd said, Zach, come here. And he was just kind of running around. I said, Zach, come here. Well, the reality is, is he was within my hand reach, and I just reached out and put my, head on top, my hand on top of his head, and I turned his head where I wanted him to go, and I walked him and set him down in the seat. <laughs> I'm his dad. He wasn't listening to me. But there was someone that walked in the door, and Jeannie said, that person was looking at you, and I looked at him, and they were giving me like the evil eye, like... You're abusing your child. And I'm thinking, I'm just telling him where to go and what to do and helping him. I'm glad that God would do that for us. That his commands are radiant and give, and they give light to our eyes. That he can tell us where to, where to look. That he can tell us where to go. The fifth statement, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. There's a lot we can talk about the fear of the Lord, but in the most basic sense of fear, fearing the Lord is a respect or a reverence. That, like we would give to a king because of his royalty, to honor that position. Fear the Lord. But if we offend the king, we realize that punishment can be expected. So the fear of the Lord says, it says that it's pure, it's clean, it's without evil and corruption. To say that the fear of the Lord is pure means that there is a purifying effect on our life, on our thoughts, on our attitudes, and our motives. And if we're honest, honest with ourselves, motive is a tough thing for many of us. Why did I do what I did? Good or bad? This is what Jeremiah says in Jeremiah, the human heart, Jeremiah 17, 9. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God, it's what we're talking about. It's alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The fear of the Lord. It's pure. And it endures forever. The scripture tells us that the word of the Lord is what endures forever. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. The word is eternal. It, it never needs updated. It never needs edited. It never needs refined. And it will never be outdated. It will never be inadequate or irrelevant. The word of God endures forever. The last statement, the sixth statement, Pastor Austin would come to the platform. It says this, the decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. The decrees. It has a judicial tone, judicial terminology. So we can look at the word like this. It is the authoritative principles and commands. It's the authority. 
It's the adjudication of the judge of the whole earth. And this is what it means. God has the final say-so. He's the judge. He has the final say-so. The righteous judge has issued a verdict, and it's absolutely true, and it stands firm. And the scripture tells us that all of them are righteous, meaning they are right. They give us right standing so that we can walk in right relationship with him. So when we think about statutes, and precepts, decrees, and commands, it may make us think of rules that keep us from having fun. How many of us have heard somebody say, you know what, I, I, I'm not into Christianity. It's all about taking, taking things away from you. You can't have any fun. You can't do what you want to. I can, do, I can do whatever I want to. It's just that my want to is different than it used to be. Because I've found that, you know what, I don't wake up in the morning with, a, with regrets like I used to. I don't wake up in the morning going, what was I thinking? If I'm staying in relationship and I'm hearing the voice of God, I don't have those kind of issues anymore. But what we see in these verses is completely opposite of that, of that conclusion. What does it say? The law that revives and refreshes? The law that makes us wise, that gives joy to our hearts, that gives light to our eyes? It warns us and it rewards us. It's not taking our fun away. God has good for you if you will listen to his voice and follow his words because God's laws are guidelines. Guidelines that light our path. It's like he's got a, a, a big flashlight or a spotlight and he can shine it and say, this is the way to go. Kind of a corresponding chapter in Psalm. We've been looking at Psalm 19, Psalm 119. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It guides us and it illuminates the way for us to go. Psalm 119, 11. How can a young person keep their way pure? They do so by living according to your word. And scripture after scripture talking about how the word and reading the word and doing what it says. Don't, James says, don't merely listen to the word. You deceive yourselves if you don't do what it says. Don't just listen to the word. Do what it says bottom line is we need to be people of the word we need to be people who are in the word and we need to know who God is because there is so much noise there are so many voices there is so much deception there are so many people and the enemy is out there trying to drag people away and he'll make you believe a lie and you know what it says in scripture in the last days there's going to be a lot of deception a lot of smart well-meaning Godly people are going to be deceived. When you read the end of the book, that's what's going to happen. I don't want that to happen for you. We got to really know who he is. We need to turn on and we need to tune in. How many of you this morning would say, I could do better? So today, not, not condemnation, but I'm saying as a way of challenging and you would say today, I'm, I'm taking the challenge. I need to take a step forward in connecting with God and listening for his voice. Not just kind of wandering my way through life, trying to figure out where to put my foot. But I'm listening, I'm tuned in. And when he speaks, I know his voice that's you today and you take that challenge I just want to ask you to stand so wait before we do that okay you can go ahead if you want to stand go ahead I don't want you to stand if you know it's just the popular thing to do but here's the thing I know I know that we fall short right this is not condemnation this is not heaping guilt this is us saying look I need to know what God is saying. And the word, he's given us the word. We have it. We can put it in our hands. We can see it with our eyes. We can read it. We can read it. We can know. If we're missing something, we can find it. It's right here. I want to know God. 
I want more of him. And here's the thing, just a handful of us taking a couple steps in this direction can change our church, it can change our community. I can't even begin to imagine what if we all took this seriously and we left today saying, you know what, I'm given at least five minutes more of my time to being in the Word, to let God speak to me, what exactly would happen. God, I pray that you would speak into our hearts, speak, give us direction, give us wisdom, make wise our simple minds and our simple lives. God, we want to follow the path that you have for us. God, I pray that we would stand up and that we would be able to know, God, that you would say, don't listen to that, don't watch that, don't read that, don't be part of that. That you would give us wisdom to say, this is where I want you to go, this is the direction, this is how I want you to handle that. God, you've spoken to us very clearly in your written word. There's so many other ways, God, that you speak, but we need to know the word. Let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Let it illuminate our lives. God, I pray that as we create space and make room in our lives for you to speak, as we become still in such a chaotic world, God, that you'd be faithful to meet us there. God, I'm excited and a little scared to see what you can do when we truly honor you. This morning, God, there are people in this room that may be reaching out to you saying, God, I need a relationship. I need this kind of relationship. Someone that will guide me. Someone that will lead me. Someone that will show me the way because I feel like I'm struggling, trying to find my way and I just keep stumbling and ending up at dead end roads. Jesus, we offer our lives to you. I pray that you come into every heart and life and those that are reaching out to you maybe today for the first time saying, Jesus, forgive me. Be my Lord and be my Savior. God, would you change and turn their lives around as they open their hearts to you. And God, may you pour your spirit out among us that we would see more of heaven. We want you. We need you. Excited for what you have in store for us. In Jesus' name.